The penis is the location, but it contains sensation. There is pleasure in procreation meant to beget offspring. By that enjoyment, there is nirvriti, or the destruction of trouble. Both Jeev Goswami and Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, they have much to say about this topic, but not in this verse. Jeev Goswami's commentary is also very brief. Prajati ananda pyam ya nirvartas tasyaha which means the organ of generation is the place of the destruction of pain by sexual union and production of offspring. Prajati ananda nirvartehi. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says, Viryasya shukrasya parajanyasya Vrishyamana jalasya shishnuvatishthanam upasta indriyam prajati anandena santana artasam prayogena nirvratis tapahanis tasya. Almost the same thing. Viryasya uh, means of semen. From the place of the penis, shishna, arose rain showers, parjanyasya. From the organ of generation, upastha, arose the destruction of pain, nirvratehe through union for producing offspring, which is the action of the organ. So, while describing sarga and visarga at greater length, later on in the Bhagavatam, Lord Brahma explains, Nirabhidyata shishno vai prajananda amrita Ubasta asit kamana priyam tad ubhayashrayam. A very similar idea. For sexual pleasure, begetting offspring and tasting heavenly nectar, the Lord developed the genitals. And thus there is the genital, genital organ and its controlling deity, the prajapati. The object of sexual pleasure and the controlling deity are under the control of the genitals of the Lord. There in his purport, Srila Prabhupada explains, because it's very closely related to this verse, the heavenly pleasure for the conditioned soul is sexual pleasure, and this pleasure is tasted by the genitals. The woman is the object of sensual, sexual pleasure and both the sense perception of sexual pleasure and the woman are controlled by the prajapati, who is under the control of the Lord's genitals. The impersonalist must know from this verse that the Lord is not impersonal, for he has his genitals, on which all the pleasurable objects of sex depend. No one would have taken the trouble to maintain children if there were no taste of heavenly nectar by means of sexual intercourse. This material world is created to give the conditioned souls a chance for rejuvenation, for going back home, back to Godhead, and therefore generation of the living being is necessary for upkeep of the purpose of creation. Sexual pleasure is an impetus for such action. And as such, one can even serve the Lord in the act of such, such sexual pleasure. The service is counted when the children are born of such sexual pleasure are properly trained in God consciousness. The whole idea of material creation is to revive the dormant God consciousness of the living entity. In forms of life, other than the human form, sexual pleasure is prominent without any motive of service for the mission of the Lord. But in the human form of life, the conditioned soul can render service to the Lord by creating progeny suitable for the attainment of salvation. One can beget hundreds of children and enjoy the celestial pleasure of sexual intercourse provided he is able to train the children in God consciousness. Otherwise, begetting children on the level of uh, otherwise begetting children is on the level of the swine. Oh. Rather, the swine is more expert than the human being, because the swine can beget a dozen piglets at a time, 
<laughs> we see them in Vrindavan. Whereas the human being can give birth to only one at a time, generally. Sometimes twins happen, triplets even, rarely otherwise. So one should always remember that the genitals, sexual pleasure, the woman and the offspring are all related to the service of the Lord. And one who forgets this relationship in the service of the Supreme Lord becomes subjected to the threefold miseries of material existence by the laws of nature. Perception of sexual pleasure is there even in the body of the dog, but there is no sense of God consciousness. The human form of life is distinct from that of the dog by the perception of God consciousness. So Bhagavatam doesn't shy away from talking about awkward subjects like this, even in great detail. Because, if you're honest, you will admit, you're thinking about these things sometimes. And you have conceptions about these things, which generally in this world rotate around the idea of I and mine. As we say every day, uh, what is that? Shruteti nama mahatme ya priti rahito aham mamadi paramo. This is why we remain offenders to the Holy Name, because our consciousness is impure. We think that sex life is all about me and my pleasure, and this body is also meant for that purpose, and the Bhagavatam even tells us so. Yes, you've been given this body, questions at the end, you've been given this body by the grace of God for fulfilling your material desires, working out your problems. Is there some problem? You're raising your hand. Oh, he's filming. Oh, he's filming. Okay, sorry. So, you know, we, we have been blessed with this material body because of our sex desire, and we've been given the facility to employ that or not, depending on how badly we're infected by it. But the real point is this. There is a God. There was uh, one Jewish rabbi. Somebody asked him, where can I find God? And the rabbi immediately uh, replied, in your genital. <laughs> Think about it. I don't know what he meant exactly, because I, I don't think he was, I don't think he was thinking about Bhagavatam. <laughs> but actually what he said is not incorrect. According to this verse, what he said is not incorrect. And that's the whole point here. So, Jiva Goswami is explaining a little bit more about what is the pious conception of sex life. He says, this is on, uh, well, Canto 2, Chapter 10, 26, same verse. <clears throat> Offspring, pleasure, and uh, the the happiness of begetting children, these are the sense objects. Ananda means women, the cause of pleasure. Thus women are the sense objects since they are to be enjoyed directly and are cause and are, this is a bad translation, and cause enjoyment by giving bliss and producing children. Svarga is produced from children. Who wants to explain that? Swarga loka is produced from children. How's that? Swarga is produced from children. That's what it says. It's not a mistake. The hand experiences the family life? Way in the back. You say the parents are all wrong, but it happens in children. Okay, you're all guessing. When one has a son, the son is called Putra. Yes. And he, he delivers you from hell, which means you go up. At least you stay here. So maybe his interpretation is also correct. You, you stay here and enjoy material sense gratification, but ideally, if you're very conscientious because of having your consciousness purified by narrations like this one, with regard to sex life, then you will be 
mindful of your duty and you will produce pro children properly by 